what's up? It's your boy Carcino here. And here we go again. Now, I want to give a shout out to Lewis Stanton. I mean, Lewis Sutton, who made a great donation to the page, said, Keep doing what you do. I'm practicing donating the things and people that give me spiritual food. You stand for what you believe in, and that's hard in this world. More will be on the way. I appreciate that. It's not too many people that understand the sacrifice we go through. It's a huge commitment to doing what we do. Shouts out to Blunt Rap for shouting me out in a video. I appreciate that. And for everybody else that donated to the page, Reek Dog, Rel X, you know, Dave, haven't forgotten you, Dave. Bucktown NYC, J Biz, Mr. Marshall Carter, all you guys. And all you got to do is click the button to donate to the page. Just click the button in the description box and you'll be donating to the page. Um, that's not why this video is being made. This video right here. is about Kevin Johnson, KJ, from the Phoenix Suns. An individual uh, has asked me about this a year ago, and said so just was brought up again recently, and I said, it's time. It's time to do with Kevin Johnson. The truth behind the Kevin Johnson situation or the truth behind Kevin Johnson. Um, KJ was phenomenal as a basketball player. But there's probably things about Kevin Johnson you never know. Kevin Johnson lost his dad when he was like three years old. You know, and he had to go live with his grandparents and was basically raised there because his mom wasn't really capable of dealing with Kevin Johnson. Um, this speaks a large volume because Kevin Johnson had a very unusual bunch of circumstances around him as an NBA player. First off, in college, you talking about he made the University of California. Cal, Kevin Johnson made Cal. When he was at Cal, he was the first player in Cal history to have their number retired. Cal is not known for their basketball excellence. Let me tell you that right now. They're not known for it. You know, they won, They were going to Pac-10 conference <laughs> games and getting sponsorships for that. Cal is an institutional school. You got to be smart to basically go there. And Kevin Johnson was always a king for the debates when he was in college and school, doing things in political science. He was he was somebody that they looked up to. Like the people that went there, the students. They looked up to Kevin Johnson. He was somebody to model. Now, here's the problem. 
Kevin Johnson comes into the draft. He goes to Cleveland. Mark Price and Elo, Craig Elo, are the guys. And he was supposed to back up Mark Price. Well, Mark Price is not going to give up his spot and just killing it. And the Cleveland Cavaliers are like, well, there's no way we're going to just relinquish, you know, a lot more playing time for Kevin Johnson. So KJ was very unhappy with his limited minutes of being a backup for <laughs> Mark Price. That was not, not going to happen. So in a major trade that was done, like right during the All-Star break, <laughs> The massive trade that sent Kevin Johnson, Mark West, and Tyrone Coben over to the Phoenix Suns for Larry Nance and Mike Sanders. Now, this worked out great for both teams. Larry Nance was out unbelievable for Cleveland. He gave them the presence they needed, and we saw what happened to the Phoenix Suns. They came into existence when they got Kevin Johnson. He was the guy to only join Magic Johnson and Isaiah Thomas at that time for averaging the 20 and 12 in the season for two years in a row. And he joined Isaiah Thomas and Oscar Robinson, who averaged 20 and 10 for three and more seasons. Funny how you keep saying Isaiah Lord Thomas the third name pop up, right? Okay, I just wanna make sure you paying attention. Kevin Johnson, and the fact is they mentioned John Stockton's name a lot. But John Stockton wasn't a huge point scorer. He was more an assist guy than he was a scorer. Not saying that he couldn't, but he was a you know, big-time shot maker. But the person that always was left in the shuffle was Kevin Johnson. Now, during this time, uh, Kevin Johnson, all the years playing in the NBA, they would look at him. They used to call him the choir boy. All his teammates would try to take him out to the bar and get Kevin Johnson drunk, hang out with him and do all these things. And they'd be like, yo, man, we got the extra girls at the hotel, you know, Call up Kevin's KJ. See what KJ doing. KJ wasn't really feeling that. So during the 1990s season, there was a. And the 1990 season was Kevin Johnson's big breakthrough. They finally beat the Los Angeles Lakers. He was the most improved player in 1989. But they got swept by the Los Angeles Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. The very next year, they come back and they beat the defending two-time world champions. Well, they weren't the defending two-time champions at that point. They former two-time champion. And this was their first year without Kareem. They got smoked four games to one. <clears throat> As Kevin Johnson basically took Magic Johnson to school. And they ended the Lakers' Western Conference championship reign. Because without that success, that Western Conference reign, now it was time for a new successor. But Kevin Johnson choked once they got to the to the you know the Western Conference final. So that year, Kevin Johnson became a breakout star. You know they was like, oh man, well Phoenix is on their way. You know, the Blazers beat them that year, but that don't mean anything. Uh, you know, they'll be back next season. Well, Kevin Johnson, for some reason, who never seen to participate in these things, there was uh, an incident 
alleged where he was having a fundraiser that for his St. Hope or some some uh, charity school that he was opening up, there was some weird behavior being noticed by Kevin Johnson, who was mentoring some of the students there. People just said, well, the St. Hope thing is just like, uh, it's like an education reform thing. And Kevin is just so good and hands-on with the kids. So Kevin Johnson is just there, and sometimes he was there at weird times when he wasn't needed to be around. You know, it was like, okay, this is pretty weird. Him having, like, conversation conversations with some of the students that he was having. It was just a little off. And nobody really paid no attention to it at that time in 1990. But it was just like, some of the female students, you know, in the program or the people that was there were kind of gravitating towards, you know, Kevin Johnson a little too much. Now, we don't want to, this is all alleged. We don't want to go there, you know, and things started to go into a different avenue for Kevin Johnson because sponsorship started to flow his way because he was very articulate. And by using that, others used it, thought of it as manipulative. He had a bunch of real estate development programs, sports management programs, uh, public appearances, public speaking organizations. And he know he knew how to raise money. So when he opened the charter school with his pre-kindergarten and twelfth grade charter school, and these weird things that stories that people were hearing about him and the kids, it all started to to rear its head in 1996 when a girl came out and accused saying that she, Kevin, you know, showered with her. They, she, they even tried to catch him on a, a wiretap in 96, where he denied it and he paid a quarter, uh, over a quarter of a million to make this thing go away. So people say, okay, well, they tried to shake and take down Kevin Johnson. This is extortion. This doesn't make any sense. This is in 1996, where the, the police had a confession from her, and, and they actually have him on tape saying, oh, I gave her an intimate hug that I probably shouldn't have given her. The hug went on further than what it should have been. But she's saying that they actually showered together, and weird things started happening over and over again as a teacher actually resigned when another case arrived. And it was covered up. Kevin Johnson was bringing millions and millions of dollars with his programs, raising 22 million, 26 million in donations. But the more he started to have these things happen, he started to see he had less and less NBA support. The National Basketball Association started to fall back away from Kevin Johnson's apparently supposed it good image. You start seeing less and less of former NBA players who played and loved Kevin Johnson. You start to see less and less praise or mention of Kevin Johnson by the NBA. As they own people were looking into this for other reasons. Kevin Johnson retired in 19... Uh, 98, at the end of 1998, due to an injury, supposedly a hernia. Then he came back for one more year out of retirement once all this attention and things had blown down. Once he ran for mayor, every time he ran for office, more of these claims come up, which he, he vehemently denies. Now, 
Kevin Johnson's basketball ability was not the question. Okay. It was his other activities. As one of his teachers, she resigned as one of the people, one of the students, female students said that Kevin had groped her in an inappropriate manner. She tried to, you know, tell the school about the situations and every time she did, she kept getting the people telling her, we got this, don't worry about it, just go to work, we'll deal with it, no problem. So, the county decided not to prosecute Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson kept the Sacramento Kings from leaving the city of Sacramento. Even when they wanted to go to Seattle. He kept that team in the city finding money, finding ways to get money, keeping his school in play, and local authorities were not about to come after Kevin Johnson. So for the first time ever in 2015, the whole world got to see the 1996 police video. And they believed it was others. Now, St. Hope High School, which is his school that he set up, his, when he was running for mayor in 2007, I believe, he brought up all of these charges against Kevin Johnson or these claims or allegations, but no charges were never filed against him. A group of what they had all these leaders in Sacramento who were um, uh, I think they were demanding the release of the police reports you know these women from Sacramento the district board members they wanted to release all this stuff on Kevin Johnson now the complaint about Kevin Johnson was that they were claiming same hope they started to intimidate <coughs> the student initially through an illegal interrogation. And that's what one of the teachers was saying. And she brought it up to people and she was asked to resign. Sorry about that, something went down here. Only two students clarify, I mean, confirm what the counselor was saying. And they said, well, I think the allegations of the school was handled in a way that you would handle it. Now, all the normal protocols that were supposed to follow, I think it's pretty clear that there was nothing there. And no one believed the young lady. And they said, well, Kevin Johnson's actions were ill-advised, but they weren't illegal. Now, this continued a pattern that kept going. Now, the AmeriCorps organization, right? Now, they saw the sum of $423,836 over the last 10 years of settlement, settlement allegations and it spent AmeriCorps grants and education awards and did not provide the documents of spending of grants. Now, AmeriCorps had $847,673 in it and half of it is gone to pay for 
allegations. Hush money. And the U.S. Attorney Lawrence G. Brown announced that. St. Hope Academy over three years from 2004 to 2007. Kevin Johnson, St. Hope Academy. Okay, the founder and former CEO agreed to pay $72,836.50 of St. Hope's Academy's $73,836.50 initial payment in a settlement. St. Hope's Academy acknowledged not adequately documented portions of the AmeriCorps grant expenditures. And the Corporation of National and Community Service terminated its September 2000 an eight suspension of St. Hope Academy and Johnson receiving federal funds, ending questions about Sacramento's eligibility to receive federal stimulus funds. Now, all of these situations started to come more and more frequent as he was on a campaign re-election a group of volunteers who was there to help out and perform as interns working on this campaign Kevin Johnson came in and what they said appeared to be drunk stayed there and started sleeping around one of the, the girls, you know, and he was always touching and rubbing on them on their shoulders and kissing them on the forehead, telling them what a good job they've done. They just thought this was very weird behavior for the man that's running for mayor. Like he had no reason to come there to sleep where they were going to be sleeping at. And he just got in one of the beds and said he was going to sleep in there, you know, and one that one of the girls just got up and left. So it was just very weird behavior for them. So with all of this controversy going on and they kept surrounding Kevin Johnson, all of these allegations were piling up and they kept saying, well, why is this guy keep hanging around charter schools? And all of these different things. And all of these different incidents were taking place around Kevin Johnson. And nothing was done about it. 2015. An investigation was going to be launched in another situation where a woman claimed Kevin Johnson rubbed his private parts on her and asked her, did she feel it? Did she feel that? And this is 2015. As disgusting as that sounds. Nothing was done about it, but Kevin Johnson decided not to run for his next election, that it would be his last. Now, get this. Kevin Johnson, who went through this whole term not having any kids, not having a wife, or as long as he did. Nobody remembered him having a steady girlfriend, really. 
just off and on with maybe some stand-ins. Never seen in a real relationship situation. Kevin Johnson decided it would be in his best interest if if he was going to continue to be running for mayor of Sacramento again. He needs to get married. And he needs to get married fast. He needs a quick wife. So what does Kevin Johnson need? A quick wife. Who else could they do? Oh, a former educator's wife. Somebody he knew through the education department, a woman that, an Asian lady that he knew, named Michelle Reed. Michelle Reed was married to another education person in the education department, and she was in charge of, she was the chancellor of the District of Columbia school system. And she was an advocate believer in everything Kevin Johnson says and did. And what did she get? She became the first lady of Sacramento. And that's for people who becomes the wife. So therefore, she's part of the education program. She's in the mix. So the then divorced woman who went to Harvard and Cornell, very smart, educated woman, but also very much poised in politics and knowing how things work, knowing her place in the situation and not to really shake the boat and build towards something as she was again part of the Democratic Party with Kevin Johnson they have a lot of political pull and that political pull used to cover for all this philanthropy that went on so no matter all the controversies that went through the South Korean immigrants the daughter of South Korean immigrants rather She made sure she was going to play her position and help the family, the team, reach the new heights that they want. Now he had what he wanted. A yes wife. But the allegations kept rolling in. So once he decided not to run again, as they told him, people basically told him it's time to, to sit it down because Obama's getting ready to leave office. And the new regime is coming in. You will not be protected. So when Obama left office, so did Kevin Johnson. See, the winds of change were blowing in a different direction. Kevin Johnson knew he wouldn't have the backing and the protection that he normally was having in, by the Democratic Party for his actions or his activities for all the alleged allegations that went on that he venomously denies. But it kept raining down on him. You see, that's the, that's the problem. For over 20 years, 
This man has paid out money over allegations, constantly paying money, paying hush money. Right? And what do you get out of it? A tainted NBA career, tainted lives, other people's lives is probably destroyed because of Kevin Johnson. How many more? How many more have to suffer before they realize we got to get it right? How many more? How many more people have to suffer before people realize we got to do something to get it right? Now, no one's going to say Kevin Johnson wasn't a great basketball player. He was. Wasn't a closer. He choked the 93 finals against the Bulls. But this just goes to show you, just because someone's very articulate, they're very well liked, they might have a dark side you know nothing about or issues that was never addressed. It was always patched up. Somebody came along to fix it. So the problem was always there and it never was addressed. This is a guy who had the void of his father not being in his life present since he was three years old. And that void of not really knowing his father seemingly weighed heavy on his heart. Now, everyone always compared Kevin Johnson to, like, the NBA loved him. And, but he never quite got the, the accolades that everyone else got. You know, he felt like he should have been a, more than just a, a two-time, three-time All-Star. But because he played in Phoenix and... They didn't get a lot of attention. He was overlooked a lot by the other point guards, like John Stockton. They kept putting Stockton ahead of him in a lot of situations, and he felt like I was better than John for a lot of years, which he was. It was true. So when they selected John Stockton, it was like a slap in Kevin Johnson's face, but it was so much a big, you know, ooh-wah, because Isaiah was supposed to go if anybody was going to go. Because next to Magic Johnson, there was no other point guard. It was Magic, and it was Isaiah. And then there's the rest of everybody else. And out of the rest, Kevin Johnson was next. Not John Stockton. So it was very insulting at that time, you know, very insulting on the dream team that, you know, they chose John Stockton when he hadn't won anything and had nearly hadn't had the success that the Phoenix Suns had with Kevin Johnson. Now,
all of Kevin Johnson's basketball accolades and all the stuff that he did is forever marred in this big, gigantic mess that wound up being his NBA career. It just totally destroyed his NBA career. So when they mention, watch how they don't mention Kevin Johnson a lot in the NBA. They kind of mention him and don't show him. He's not around a lot of NBA functions. He's not mentioned in the top players. Kevin Johnson will not be mentioned. The NBA was smart to keep their players away from Kevin Johnson. In a lot of situations. When you have these type of allegations that keep popping up randomly about the same person over and over and over again, there is a consistent problem that needs to be addressed. You know what I'm saying? So until you get that fixed, you're going to continuously go down this cycle. So it's your boy Carcino, man. I'm out.